My name is Ali Musavi, and I'm excited to present the 2023 Around Festival end-to-end -end automotive workflow with my colleague Hunter Elmore. In this session, I will showcase my personal automotive workflow within Gravity Sketch and how Hunter and I collaborated on this hypercar project. So let's jump right in. Here I have my early ideation, which was created with the ink tool. I like to sketch with the ink tool to rough in a sketch or an idea, similar to how you would approach a napkin sketch. I created a few iterations and then moved over to the stroke tool to finesse and create some clean lines. From there, I used the sub D ribbon in conjunction with the volume tool to block in the sketch with a flat white shader. This creates proportions very fast and allows you to make quick decisions. As you can see here, I selected a few proposals and blocked them in to create an interesting graphic breakup. I like to keep the original sketch lines while creating these uh, alongside the surfaces to maintain an empathic quality. As I was searching for these, I felt there was another proportion that could have been a little bit more interesting. So to assist in this search, I turned to Viscom, and I was able to generate a few images based on the screenshots of the models that I created in Gravity Sketch. This workflow is very valuable if you're looking to get a glimpse of the end product before investing too much time into an idea. As you can see here, these orange sketches were derived from one of the themes below, and it turned out to be a pretty strong contender as Viscom generated some impactful images using the Technicolor 6 preset. Even though the orange theme didn't make the cut, I continued my search for a more unique proportion as I stepped back into Gravity Sketch. Once I arrived at this sketch, I felt I had something pretty interesting and unique. I was able to quickly ideate on the theme and begin to develop the first sub-D model. At this stage, I find massive value in using the sub-D ribbon stroke. It's a very quick way and empathic way to block in the body, and it feels very similar to sketching. I like to work with unsubdivided surfaces as I can get better insight into the construction of the surfaces, the theoreticals, and where my transitioning surfaces will be. From there, I like to review my surfaces using the web viewer in landing pad. It's a great way to step away from the spatial aspects of Gravity Sketch and analyze the car using the zebra shader. You can also create screenshots in the web viewer, and that led to my second round in Viscom. This time around was massively successful as I paired Viscom with Photoshop to generate a clear and impactful theme. Comparing this to a traditional workflow, some of these renderings might have taken two to four hours each. Coupling Gravity Sketch with Viscom cuts that time down by a whopping 80% and allows you to focus on execution instead of laboring over a Photoshop rendering. I think these images turned out amazing and it led me to the final design. Leading to the final stages of the project, Hunter and I combined the exterior and interior and prepped the data for export. For our visualization, we used Twinmotion. But before getting there, we color-coded each individual element to inform Twinmotion that each surface will be its own material, thus separating them. To add immediate value to your design, work smarter and not harder by implementing some external assets. By using Sketchfab and other asset-based sites, Hunter and I imported electric motors, suspension, and as well as an engine to make the model more believable. It's all smoke and mirrors at the end of the day, but it adds a touch of believability when creating those final renderings. To conclude the exterior portion of this walkthrough, Hunter and I created some impactful exterior and interior imagery as well as an animation. The total time spent on this project can be summed up to a week's worth of work, which is incredibly fast for the output quality. And with that being said, I'll pass it over to Hunter. So while Ali was working on the exterior, I was doing some work on the interior side of things that we have over here. And Ali had done a great job of sharing some of his theme work that he had done on that exterior. So as soon as he had that theme kind of chosen and directed, he offloaded that kind of cleaner, simpler sketch to me so that I could start sketching the interior in reference to that. What I was able to do was take that, throw a few mannequins in here to give an idea of the H point and the passenger positioning within that overall package so that I can start sketching just a rough gestural version of my idea for the interior. And I do that with the ink tool, just really quick, rough, scratchy sketches. The idea here, especially at an initial departure, is to be emotional, to be quick, to get as many ideas out as I can. And typically this will have anywhere from a dozen to a few dozen to as many designs as it really takes to identify a theme that's worth moving forward with. 
Now, obviously right now I'm looking at everything from kind of a bird's eye view, but what I can do is scale myself up and get in that viewpoint of the driver or the passenger at scale and get an idea of what's going on in that interior. This is really helpful for human factors, ergonomics, just really immersing yourself in that viewpoint of the passenger or the user to give a clearer idea as you're sketching and make sure that all of my thoughts, all of my iterations are really intentionally developed. I can find out where my touch points are. I can interact with the space as if I'm actually in it and get a better, clearer idea of that actual physical 3D space that I'm sitting in. And another thing that I want to call out really quick is that I am ideating all of this within the actual reference of Ali's exterior. Both of those are lining up. Both of those are being developed at the same time, oftentimes in the same collab room. So anything that I'm changing on the interior, anything that's happening with the exterior, we can communicate that more effectively, more consistently, and it just helps throughout that entire development process, especially if both of these development processes are happening in tandem. Once I'm happy with that overall theme, my personal preference is to start getting a bit more granular. So I go from the overall theme to detailed component design. In this case, it's kind of those hero components, the seat, the steering wheel, those parts that are going to really be impactful in terms of the larger contextual environment of the interior. So I'll pull that mannequin forward, take that rough sketch and start to refine a bit, whether it's the ink tool or this point stroke tool, that gives me a bit more fidelity so I can put it on its own layer, lower the opacity and just do an overlay sketch the same way you would do in two dimensional overlays or in Photoshop. I can start to actually edit those points and make sure that everything is a bit more precise. It just gives me that next level of cleanliness so that I can evaluate that design theme and make changes as I go. One of the great things about Gravity Sketch is that it's easy to copy that forward, edit it, and improve. So once I get through that stage, I do that again. I go through another step of iteration. And what's awesome is that I can find specific components that I like or that I don't like through this iterative process and edit them or change them. So in this case, I was moving forward with the seat and the steering wheel, but I have kind of different sections of the seat. I was pretty happy with this rear section here of the headrest and that back portion, but the lower portion I kind of redesigned at this point. I really did it from the ground up and then started over a bit, but I got to this point where I have a clear image that I'm happy with of what my interior is going to look like in terms of those hero components, that seat, that steering wheel, how they're going to interact with each other and how those forms interplay. And again, like I was doing before, I'm able to actually zoom myself up, go one-to-one -one scale, and evaluate everything that I'm creating. This is something I consistently and constantly do through the design process. I'm always trying to put myself in that view of the user, see things at scale, and get that overall vibe. I can also leave notes for myself, or Ali can come over here and leave notes, so that we can collaboratively work towards a better solution. I like to think of this whole design process as kind of an assembly line of sketches. You're starting with your rough ideas, moving forward, getting more fidelity until you're finally coming through to your design intent as it's finalized. So I'll take that, move that seat into the exterior buck again, and get just that contextual environment. At this point, I have my hero components of the seat and the steering wheel kind of fleshed out. So now with that extra level of fidelity, I can go and do that same approach with the rest of the interior. I can build out the rest of that tub. I can sketch out those guidelines and make sure that I'm coming to a more intentfully driven sketch that I can start to surface over or I can feed into AI. So I take all of that and what I end up with is something like we see here. I'll hide the exterior, just show the interior. And very similar to how Ali did with his AI exploration in the exterior, I will take those screenshots, upload them to Vizcom directly from landing pad and use some text to image generation that uses these screenshots as reference. This is a really powerful part of the integration between Gravity Sketch and Vizcom is that as opposed to a lot of other AI software where you're really at the discretion of the AI tool in terms of what's being generated, this is essentially just rendering over top of your sketch. It's taking what you already have and creating a higher fidelity resolution result that is easier to evaluate fairly against other aspects of the design. And because we've done that in Gravity Sketch, we have a 3D model that we can actually generate multiple views, multiple renderings, multiple iterations, all based off of one asset 
that we've developed. So it's a much faster, more efficient workflow than traditionally rendering each of these individually. You know that there's going to be carryover and consistency between your renderings that are being generated by AI. You know that you have control over that actual design process. And you're, you're left with some pretty intriguing results very quickly. So these are helpful for me to evaluate my design theme at just that next level of fidelity and make sure that before I go into surfacing, if there's anything specific that I want to change, I can do that. But I saw from this rendering specifically here that I was pretty happy with that design theme. I was really starting to get excited about where it was heading, and I wanted to carry that through to the next stage in Gravity Sketch, which really is taking that sketch that I've developed and applying surfacing to it. But in order to apply that surfacing, I kind of need to go back through that cycle from overall theme back to a bit more granular detail. So I'll take this sketch that I've developed of my whole theme at that wireframe component level and start to surface out the individual components again. This is a great opportunity to go back, reevaluate that individual aspect of the design and build it out further. My personal preferred workflow for surfacing is using the low poly surface tool. I like to use that in point mode so that it's easy for me to manage all of my polygons and my topology. But I'll start with essentially this. I'll, I'll build a simple surface, start to push and pull those points, and then I manipulate those points to build out my volume as simply as possible. In subdivision workflows, you want to make sure to keep it simple and then go to that next level of detail. So if I want an edge, I'll add an edge loop. If I need to transition and change how that surface is transitioning, I will slide those points along that surface. But a key component here is to make sure that you're doing it with as simple geometry as possible because any unnecessary complexity is harder to edit later on. But I can build out this surface, build out this whole seat, this whole steering wheel in a much faster time frame than I can typically do in other software. And all of this is editable. I can keep all this geometry easily changeable. I don't have to worry about things blowing up. I don't have to worry about parametric data. I can build that to the references that I have here in the scene, but I can also do it with a level of freedom and creativity. And you can get as detailed as you want with this. You'll see here, I kind of built out each individual component so that I could have those material breaks, but I made sure because I was working in low poly to have all of those edges kind of coincident and, and tangential where I need them to be so that everything is pretty concise. It all fits well together and you can go to as much detail as you want. I got down to the point where I was doing some interesting harness details, some images, some stitching patterns. Uh, you can get pretty detailed with it. And that's all part of the fun of developing something that is more believable, more detailed, and with more going on. You can also take that model and explode it out. Here you can see each of the individual pieces that I use to build and surface this seat. This is a pretty far along level, right? Like I could print this if I really wanted to. I could uh, mill out some of these models. I could use this as reference for another software, whatever I want it to be. But in this case, we were working towards a rendering workflow. So I wanted to make sure that each material had thickness, each material had edges, rollovers, and just was going to be believable when it rendered through that ray tracing. Taking this approach of exploding out the surfaces and really making sure that you're identifying all of the key components is also really helpful to communicate design intent. I like to think about it like a tech pack or like a blueprint that you would have. We can also communicate if there are things we like or things we don't like. This is really helpful when we're communicating both in the collab room and also when we're exporting externally. Maybe we're sharing it with a modeler or another partner and we want to really identify which pieces are individual and which pieces are meant to be assemblies. But obviously at this point, I've taken that surface model to a point where I'm pretty comfortable with these hero components. I'm happy with the way the steering wheel is looking. I'm happy with the way that the seat is looking. And I'm able to take those and continue that cycle, put them back into the context of the broader interior within the exterior shape and start to evaluate those further. So as part of that process, I take those over, I duplicate them across, I have everything and I start to surface out that interior as well. So the idea here is just to get everything to the same level of fidelity, really evaluate some of those details and some of those different pieces that sometimes can go under the radar and sometimes aren't really addressed until we get into 3D later on. But within the Gravity Sketch workflow, we're thinking about that the entire time. We're always able to see how that interior and exterior relate to one another, and we're able to update that in real time because we're working in the same file in the same collab room. So we can communicate hey, does the exterior need to change here? Does the interior need to change here? If there are components and parts that are missing or where we have gaps, how are we going to address that? 
And really what this does is it just lets us think to that next level of clarity and, and, and keeps everything clear in terms of our design intent. But again, zooming up to 100% scale, evaluating things, always questioning the designs, always questioning what we want to change, always trying to iterate and make that better. But at this point, a lot of the interior is really at a point where I'm able to offload that to Ali, we're able to connect the two and start to evaluate them in a relatively realistic environment. We can take these models, this 3D space that we're in, connect the two and make sure everything's lining up, make sure that we have as high of a fidelity model as we want. And because we're working towards a rendering pipeline and workflow, we have these models ready to export to another program like Twinmotion, like VRED, whatever your preferred rendering platform is. At Gravity Sketch, we're big fans of Twinmotion because it's really easy to just export that, drag and drop materials, plug and play, come up with relatively realistic environments and start to tell that story much earlier on in the design process. But in order to do that, we take this model and we apply kind of a clown shader just to separate the different pieces that are going to be assigned different materials. And you can see here some screenshots and a version of Ali's exterior that shows some of those clown passes where we're just, like I said, changing the colors, making sure the different materials are the same. And then we can drop that into twin motion. Ali was able to take this into so in motion with the interior and the exterior, line them up over top of each other and just drag and drop materials onto those parts to make it more realistic, to build out an environment. And these kinds of renderings and animations, if we look at the whole design process as a linear timeline, this kind of stuff usually waited until around the end of that design process, really. We spent a lot of time ideating, a lot of time thinking, but in terms of telling that story, to get to this level of animation and fidelity and renderings, typically that waited until later on in the design process. What Gravity Sketch and Twin Motion and these different tools are enabling is taking all of that timeline and compressing it, not in a negative way for designers, but really just making it so that they can develop these assets faster and more easily. So rather than waiting until way down the line and being kind of an additive piece, it is something that's becoming much earlier on in the design process. We're able to do it back here towards the beginning within a week, within two weeks of kicking off the project to really get that storyline across to impact people who are stakeholders in the project and really convince them of a theme or of a specific uh, path forward. And again, this is a pipeline to an external program. This is all twin motion. This is kind of a rendering pipeline, but we don't have to move outside of Gravity Sketch. We can definitely take our models that we've developed in here and review them internally. This is uh, more of an additive piece, but we can add that exterior and the interior together here in headset, in program, and get to a pretty high level of fidelity for augmented reality pass-through reviews, for full virtual reality view reviews where we're able to put it inside the contextual environment that it would be in in real life. So I think that's what Ali's gonna go into next, but this is, again, kind of an overview of that whole interior process. Hopefully it's been helpful to share with you guys, and I'm curious to hear how your process may differ from this, uh, and if there are other tools, other workflows that you personally have found success in or that you'd be interested in hearing more about. Uh, but with that, I'll hand it back to Ali and he'll take us through the more finalized, complete model of both the exterior and the interior together. Thanks, Hunter. You did an amazing job on the interior. It really brought this car to life. Now with the design completed, we could walk around it and view the exterior or jump into the interior and really feel the excitement of the driver's seat. To wrap up this session, we created this room to display the final gravity sketch model. The tunnel and cityscape you see here was geometry created in gravity sketch, but textured in Blender. This is another great way to emulate a contextual environment for your design. As we wrap up, I wanna thank Hunter for joining me on this journey with this design. It's been a blast and thank you everyone for listening and tuning in. Uh, this was for the around 2023. We hope to see you next year as we're probably going to have another really kick-ass project to share with y'all. Thank you. See you next time.